Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Ham Radio DX. I hope you're all well out there today or this evening or wherever you are watching. Thank you for joining me on today's live stream. I'm Hayden VK7 Double H, and today, uh, today we're talking with women in ham radio. Um, that's right, the whales who are a big part of our hobby showing us exactly how it's done. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, viewers already in. Uh, put in your comments in the chat. Uh, we've got a, a, a comment here from WB Grubstake on Facebook. It's not by men's choice that women haven't come into the hobby. Ladies, we welcome you. Get a license, get a radio or build one, get a key, get a mic, seven threes and great DXing to you all. Uh, we've also got Justin, very cool, can hardly wait. And we've also got uh, Joe, can't wait to hear my wife, KO4HHI, along with Kat and Rhea into RJ on this show. And we've also got another special guest as well joining us today. So before we introduce the panel today, I'd like to thank everybody for their support uh, for the channel. Uh, it's not gone unnoticed. I really do appreciate it all. And uh, if you're watching and you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to keep up to date with uh, every upload from Ham Radio DX. So let's introduce our panel today. We have Kat uh, W4DXY, or also known as Dixie DX on YouTube. We have Rhea N2RJ, who is also the ARRL Hudson president, I Hudson, think. Hudson division director. Div division director, sorry. Right. Um, we also have Mary Catherine, KI4 double oh. HI, and Joe as well there, hanging out as we saw in the comments. And we've also got Linda VK7 QP. Hi there. So, let me just turn off that background so that we can see everybody properly. And throughout today, if you're on social media or on uh, uh, watching this, we've got the hashtag ham chicks rule. So uh, let's get that trending. <laughs> Joe's been posting that on Twitter. And uh, I think uh, he mentioned earlier on before we started the show that that's coming from uh, Katie Allen, who, uh, who started that uh, a little while ago. So uh, yeah, hashtag ham chicks rule if you're on uh, social media. So, how is everybody? How's your day been? How's your week been? It's good. Good. Busy. Busy? Yeah. How's, uh, how's the situation with you guys? Uh, we'll, we'll start with uh, Mary Catherine and Joe with uh, the lockdowns. Are you guys still um, managing to get out and about? I, I've noticed on your social media that you've been a, a little <laughs> bit active, Joe, but uh, how's things been over there? They're good. They're good. Uh, yes, Georgia is not locked down as much as uh, some states over here. So we um, we're still working and carrying on going, you know, we limit our contact with people. We're not getting together and hanging out with friends as much. But, you know, going to the grocery store, going to work, you know, really the same kind of thing. Yeah, it's good that there's some form of normality starting to, to come yeah. back to things. Uh, what about uh, uh, Rhea? What's things like with you? So um, in New Jersey, we are in stage three of reopening where everything's pretty much open with reduced capacity. Um, school starts next week and some schools are virtual. Um, some are in person. My kids are in person. So that's how it is here. Um, other than that, you know, I'm working from home until probably the end of the year. Yeah, we've still got the situation here in Australia where some people are coming back to work, some are still uh, working from home. It sort of depends on whereabouts you live as well because there's various different little pockets of the virus still uh, hanging around. Uh, uh, Kat, what's uh, things like where you are? Oh, over here in Alabama, uh, the governor just extended the mask ordinance and it's pretty much back to normal. Our, we have movie theaters back open, so I was able to go watch Unhinged last week. Uh, we also had a fair, and there was a bunch of people there. And so it's kind of back to normal, and everybody's going day to day. And I'm a, um, considered an essential person, so I've been working through the whole COVID thing. Oh, that's good. And uh, Linda, Linda's actually not located too far away from me. So, uh, how's things? Been? Do you want to give a short synopsis of how things have been in our in our state? Yeah, uh, th things are 
returning to normal now. Uh, we got the announcement today with the end of the school year that the uh, uh, the um, people finishing school have a formal uh, dance at the end of the, the year and they are going to be allowed to dance this year. So uh, they're all feeling pretty good about that. Night Nightclubs are still shut because you can't dance where there's alcohol, which is disappointing. Uh, the, the, um, there are no concerts, so I, I enjoy the uh, Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra. And uh, of course, they can't put any concerts on because there's no uh, uh, crowd control there. Uh, but there's a lot of concerts coming on the on the um, uh, on the internet from them. So uh, so that's a good uh, link to have. So yeah, it's uh, getting back to normal. It's been good to have the uh, radio club meetings. Otherwise, I'd never have found that this uh, activity was on. Um, and uh, schools are uh, fairly normal now. I think uh, there are a lot of people still working from home though. But I'm retired, so uh, I don't care about that. <laughs> how, how, did you guys, how did you guys find the going virtual with, like, club meetings and things like that and actually having some time to spend on the radio? Well, um, so my involvement in club meetings is more than just an attendee. I have to rep DWRL, and um, I find myself on a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of Zoom calls. And because I don't have to drive to a place or fly, I'm able to go to a lot more club meetings. I haven't been on the Zoom as much as others, but um, our our school group from back in England uh, is, was having a major celebration because we all turn 70 this year. Wow. So uh, they planned a big celebration in England for everyone to get together. Um, but because of the, all the restrictions, they weren't able to do it. So they had a Zoom meeting instead. So it meant that those of us who travelled around the world, so there was me from Australia, one from New Zealand, uh, one from uh, Sicily, uh, one from Cyprus, uh, one from Canary Islands, one from the Isle of Man. So we could all get together on the air and we wouldn't have done that um, <laughs> otherwise, you know, it had just been those who live in England who'd have got together. So I think Zoom's great. Yeah, I use Zoom for work. So <laughs> sometimes at the end of the day when we've got a club meeting, it's like not another Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a few people in the chat. We've got uh, temporarily offline, uh, uh, Steve. Uh, hello, Ham Radio DX and the crew. We've got Robbie, EI2IP. Nice to meet everybody. K6ARK, thanks for hosting the show. And we've got a few other comments. Don here, good evening, W1FYG, uh, KK6USY, uh, and K6ARK uh, says Zoom <laughs> overload. So, <laughs> yes, it is a bit of a Zoom overload at times. So, let's talk ham radio. So, what we'll do is we've got a bit of a roundtable type discussion today. Um, I've got a series of questions. We're going to get to know our panel of wonderful ladies that we've got here today. Uh, and then we'll have a bit more of a general conversation related to uh, some common topics revolving around the hobby and how uh, we can make it a more diverse and interesting hobby for, um, for those. So, and of course, uh, feel free to pop in your comments into the chat and we'll see if we can get to some of those and any questions that you may have uh, for our panel today. So today we would like to start off with Kat. So, Introduce yourself, uh, your call sign and location and how did you get interested in amateur radio? Well, I am Kat. I'm W4DXY, also known as Dixie DX. I have a YouTube channel. I started getting into ham radio after my father passed away back in December and I found um, his call sign and everything and I really wish that I had started this with him. Uh, when he was still alive. So I missed out on all that. And because at the time life was a little too busy for me to even get into the hobby. So now things have kind of slowed down a little bit. I'm able to get into it. Um, so really and truly my dad brought me into this. So, so sorry, say again, how long have you been licensed for? It's only I've very recent, licensed, isn't it? Since G July 2nd. Of 2020. July 2nd. And you've, whoops, I pressed the wrong button. You've pressed, you've uh, passed your tech. Tech. Mm -hmm. tech. And are you looking to upgrade anytime soon? 
Yes, I am currently studying for my general. Oh, how's that going? It's going really good. I'm like in chapter six or seven. Oh, that's is it. Is it a hard test? Obviously, it's harder than tech, but is it a very? That's have you spent it challenging? To, it's more to it. It's a little bit more challenging than tech. People still told me I need to memorize the answers and and the questions, and that's just a little bit of overload on those, especially when it comes to the math portion. So I'm all about math as well. I uh, don't have an accounting degree, but I did taxes and stuff. So I like doing numbers. <laughs> it's always handy when you're working out uh, um, uh, dipole links and uh, things like that. So mm -hmm. what, uh, what radios do you own or, or have you um, been looking at buying? I currently have the ICOM. ID51A plus two. I plan on getting the ICOM 7300 when I build my shack in my new house that's being built right now. So with your with your tech, you, you've got access to VHF, UHF, don't you, but not HF. That's part of general, right. is that correct? Yeah. Right. So, and you've been using um, digital modes then on, on, your, uh, on your ICOM? D yes. Uh, D-Star? Yes, I've been using D Star. Yep. How do, how do you find that? Having fun with that? I'm having uh, quite a bit of fun with that. And some uh, repeat, some reflectors are more active than others. And then somebody invited me to one, but unfortunately, they have it in the morning time, and I'm at work during that time. So <laughs> that does not work out too well. Yeah, so. those those of us working, it's a it's, it's a, get really gets in the way of radio. It does. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, what, what parts of the hobby have you enjoyed the most and what parts are you actually looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to getting into satellites. And then I'm also currently doing some contesting. I have a friend who has his amateur extra and he has an ICOM 7300. So I've been uh, contesting with him underneath his club call sign. So I plan on doing that coming up on the 12th. Um, there's an Alabama QSO party for that. Okay. So and, uh, actually you said about amateur satellites. I don't know. Um, some of our viewers may not know, but uh, the International Space Station switched on a new uh, repeater. And I, from what I've heard, it's really been going off. A lot of people have been trying to work that. So, um, and I yeah, think... I actually, um, yesterday... Um, I had to get up at 2.30 in the morning local, um, but actually on, on my Twitter, uh, at Joe Dom, I put a recording of it. We went out this morning at 9.45 a.m. local. Couldn't get on. I mean, it is packed, but I, I did get on yesterday. It's, it's, it's a great radio. I, I mean, it's got a good signal. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think for a, such a long time it's been restricted to packet radio and they've been doing – uh, SSTV photographs yep. off of the space station. So to get a voice repeater on it, it's really quite uh, quite uh, fun. So I hope that they uh, they keep that going, that's for sure. So that's good that you've been able to work that. And uh, maybe, uh, Kat, you'll be able to give that a go too on the next, uh, on the next yeah. round when it starts to pass. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so you've got a YouTube channel. Tell us about that. What have you been doing there? And what do you have planned for that channel? Okay, so I have been just basically documenting my journey in ham radio. So I've had live um, fire chats is what I called it. Somebody said, why don't you do live fireside chat? And I was like, I really didn't like the sound of that. So I just went with fire chat. Um, it's been uh, going really well. I've been talking to a lot of more followers and everything just gets them uh, to get to know me type session. And I plan on doing some reviews. Um, I got some stuff from MFJ sent in to me. And I went over that in my last live chat. And so far, I plan on just basically documenting my journey is what it's about. So I'm working right now with the local um, club here um, that does the test and everything. And I plan on doing a video on my general and what you need to bring with you to take the test and everything like that. So everybody has a uh, clear, concise of it. So 
that's what I was, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm working on that with them. So sort of, uh, are you going to start to do sort of like vlog type videos yeah. or? So it's more like a vlog, I guess. Um, just basically me journey, um, doing the whole journey. So when I go take my general, I'm going to do a video on the testing and everything. So it's probably just going to be me doing my test by myself. Um, just for the simple fact of, I don't really want to show up on test day and say, Hey, let's everybody shoot a video. And everybody's going to be like, no, I don't want to be in a video. So, uh, I just really want to do this on my own, um, the first time around and then, you know, see if anybody wants to do a video on why they're doing this. That would be really neat. However, not everybody wants to be on camera. Yeah, <laughs> it is sometimes <laughs> difficult to find people that do want to be on camera. Um, I've popped in the chat uh, a link to uh, Kat's uh, YouTube channel, Dixie DX. So check that out. Subscribe. Uh, she's as she says, she does uh, live fire chat, live fire chat. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Live yeah. fire chat on Tuesday night. Tuesdays. Yep. yep. So uh, so check that out. Um, now I also know that you've as part of that you've got some sweet new merch which i did a retweet about so if you have a look on my twitter you'll find some of the merchandise that you can get for uh for um cat's youtube channel and i must say that your logo and the way you've got your merch set out is a lot better than what i've managed with my logo mine's a bit simplistic and basic so uh that very good that's it looks really good well uh thank you uh, i took my ideas like i kind of like spliced things together and i sent them to a friend of mine who's a graphic designer so if you want to get in touch with him i can give you his information and that's what i've kind of done with a lot of things um especially um the tattoos that i have i kind of took my ideas and took them to the tattoo artist and said this is what i want and we sat down and we created it so i'm good that's at finding really cool. the people that need to <laughs> that definitely need to do it so i've gotten lucky on that well, uh, thank you for that, Kat. We've got a couple of comments here in the chat. We've got uh, hello from the UK, 2E0GLG. Thanks, Tim. We've got John. Good evening from N3ACK in Atlanta. Uh, we've got Alan. Welcome, ladies. Glad to see you and hopefully many other whales in the future. Alan KZ6B. Uh, Tim D says, hi, Rhea, and that's a good segue because we're going to go straight to Rhea now. So, Rhea, introduce yourself, uh, your call sign and location, and uh, what's your background and how did you get interested in amateur radio? So, okay, so my name is Rhea. I am N2RJ, also known as November 2 Radio Japan. Some people get annoyed because I don't use standard phonetics sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, I've, uh, I was first licensed in my birth country, which is the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And then I also got licensed in the UK and I'm licensed in the US, which is where I live now. So I live in the state of New Jersey, in Northwestern New Jersey, in a little town called Wantage, which is in Sussex County, New Jersey. So it's in an extreme Northwest part of the state. I got interested because the teacher, when I was in school, he introduced a bunch of kids to ham radio. And I was one of those that got hooked on it because of that. So this is why I'm a huge advocate for teachers. My dad was a teacher too. Um, but that, that really has nothing to do with my advocacy for teachers, um, even though my dad was a wonderful teacher. But I think that teachers could really bring a lot of people into ham radio. Um, what else do you want to know? What do I do in ham radio? I'm, yeah, uh, one one of the things is your ARRL role. Did you want to speak oh, yeah. a little bit about that and the responsibilities you have? Sure. So the ARRL has a board of directors comprised of 15 directors, 15 vice directors, officers, and um, a few others, um, vice presidents. Well, they're the officers. So I am a director and how the ARRL does directorships is that we are bound to a geographical region called a division. So my division is the Hudson Division, which has is the sections of Eastern New York, which goes all the way up to Lake George, New York, and um, New York City, Long Island, which basically is New York City and Long Island, and Northern New Jersey, which goes it 
encompasses about half the counties in New Jersey, the northern half of the state. So my main official duties are I attend the board meeting, I vote on motions, I make policy with my directors. My other duties, which I do very gladly, and I think it's a very important part of the job, is outreach. I go to a lot of events, I fly the flag, I make sure my members are listened to, and um, I make sure that I speak with them regularly and make sure that I am properly representing them, which is the best part of the job. Well, uh, so well, while we're talking about that, there actually has been a comment from K6ARK. Kids in radio are a great reason the newly proposed $50 is a concern. Rhea, do you know if the ARRO was going to express this as a concern? Sure, absolutely. Um, that, that $50 fee is something I personally oppose and is something that the ARRL opposes. And we fully intend to file comments in opposition to that FCC proposal and we're prepared to oppose it because we believe that is detrimental in the end to the service. I mean, it might seem like 50 bucks is 50 bucks, but um, for somebody starting out, I mean, you know, probably not even a kid, somebody on a fixed income, that $50 could buy them a radio, you know? Hmm. Yeah, and I mean, most kids too, like they don't have a job, they're not earning a lot of money, so yeah. that $50 seems like a lot, and especially when you're trying to get started, it's, it's uh, very difficult for them to try and find the money for that, so... Yeah, um, thanks for the question. Um, so I understand that you like contesting. Tell us about your contests and some of your achievements in contesting. Oh, okay. I love contesting because contesting, I think, is a great way to learn the ins and outs and basically push the limits. I love the phrase push the limits. It's something because I also I'm also an, a fan of electric cars. And if you have ever seen a video of a Tesla going into ludicrous mode, They'll say, are you ready to push the limits? Okay. And um, so I like the phrase pushing the limits. It allows you to, to, to get the most out of your skill, out of your station, and the most out of propagation. I, I'm a member of the Frankfurt Radio Club, which is um, a contest club basically centered around Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. And um, we take part in contests, DX contests mostly. I've had a great number of contest mentors and I enjoy getting on the air, making these contacts and making people feel happy. And in the end, I've won a few contests. You can see them on my QRZ.com. Um, I won low power AWRLDX for the United States. I came second in the world in WPX. I came, um, I've won a few others. I've, I've won a plaque and worked all Europe for North America. And you know, I really enjoy contesting. Oh, and, and I've done uh, VHF contesting too. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. and you mentioned your QRZ page. So down in the description, you'll find a link uh, for to Ria's QRZ page so you can check that out as well. Um, what's your favourite radio? Now, I did notice that on your QRZ page you have a flex. I, I imagine yes. it's hard to go past that. <laughs> <laughs> I, You know what? Well, my background is I'm a, I'm a nerd. I'm a geek. I love I love technology. I work. I, I spend um, I spend the last tech 10, 15 years working in cable television and broadcast. And now I work um, doing IT for financial industry. And in my I'm not really spare time, I, I help out my church. I do their live streams and everything. So I love technology. That's why I love my flex. I love my flex because it is, for me, it's the most versatile radio that you can have. Of course, I own Icons. I own Kenwood's. Um, we, we have a lot of fun with those, but the, the flex by far bar none is, um, is my favorite radio, the 6700. That's cool. Now you've also got some YouTube channels and I've put those in the, in the description. So, uh, one's your own and the ARRL Hudson division. Um, what kind of content can we find on there? And are you, have you got plans for that channel? I'll put a link in the chat as well. Yeah. So the channel's kind of been slowly building. I initially started off on YouTube just streaming, live streaming my radio, my flex radio, and you know, just live streaming when I get on the air and that attracted interest. Um, but lately I began to put a lot more helpful content. I want to show people how to do ham radio, more like um, you know, things that they're interested in, like how to set up software, because I do help a lot of people set up software and such in ham radio, how to do digital modes, how to do DMR, that kind of stuff. Um, 
the AWRL channel, I started, I initially thought of putting my AWRL stuff on my personal channel, but I wanted to keep that separation because I didn't want it to interfere with any of my official duties. So I have that there as an official um, vehicle for me to send out messages to the membership that, you know, where I can have, like, like I said, the best part I enjoy is actually talking with the membership. So that is part of my outreach mechanism and that is how I do it. But now, I, you know, I've had like, like Dixie said, she does chats. I do chats sometimes too. But also I do some, I want to do some more how-tos. I've done one or two videos on how-tos. So I want to do more of that. That's great. I think we need some more of that. You guys are doing a fantastic job with your your channel. So keep up at it. And uh, uh, again, guys, subscribe to their channel. Uh, check it out in the description and make sure that you uh, you go and hit that big subscribe button and give them plenty of uh, plenty of views. So we've got some more comments here. We've got uh, Josh, Ham Radio Crash Course. Hi, all. Good to see you in. Um, we have uh, Matthew, VK5ZM, saying a big hello to Linda, VK7QP. Um, <laughs> Tim D says another channel that's going to zap my spare time. So great. You've, you've, uh, you've got the idea. Go over and subscribe. So let's move on now. Thank you, Ria. So let's move on now to Mary Catherine, KO4HHI. Introduce yourself, your call sign, and how did you get introduced? Uh, how did you get introduced and start in amateur radio? Hey, I'm uh, Mary Catherine, and my call sign is KI4HHI. Um, I actually got started um, when my kids were young. They're all adults now, practically. Um, we were spending a lot of time commuting. My husband worked on the other side of Atlanta, which for those who don't know, um, it would be an hour to two hour drive for him back and forth to work. And I was driving my kids around like every mom does. And it was easier to actually talk on the radio than it was to talk on the phone at that time because, you know, it was a few years ago and we didn't have uh, the earbuds that we have and the great Apple phones that we have or whatever. So, um, yeah, so it was just easier to talk. We'd get on Simplex and talk that way um, and um, keep in touch with each other during the day. Um, and that's really what started it. And we sorry. um go ahead. No, that's okay. Go um, ahead. So how how long have you been involved in amateur radio? So probably about twenty years. Almost twenty years. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, a little bit, and, a little bit. <laughs> and I, I noticed on you've got some activities that you enjoyed. Um, tell us about that. So uh, I, I noticed that you've got uh, a lot of outdoor things. So SOTA, POTA, QRP, those sort of things. Yes, um, I really enjoy fox hunting and so. Yeah, put up the picture of that, Hayden, if you want to. The, the fox hunting picture of that. Um, and I like to play games. I'm competitive. I like to play games. Um, I don't necessarily like to sit in a shack and try to make contacts, um, but I do like to go um, out and do a fox hunt. Which, for those of you who don't know what a fox hunt is, it's basically like geocaching with radios. Um, and if you don't know what geocaching is, it's like a scavenger hunt. <laughs> yeah. uh, so um, anyway, um, that gets you outdoors. You're on, uh, you're not always on foot, but you're, you're moving around trying to find uh, the fox. Um, and that's a, the picture there is a, just a picture of a homemade antenna that Joe and I made, um, which was a lot of fun using measuring tapes and, uh, PVC. So, uh, yeah, so that's a fun little hobby. And um, then soda is also fun. That summits on the air. Um, we got a picture for that too. That's, um, that's yeah, I we might, have a picture. I might, what I might do is I might <laughs> drag that over to the other screen so I can bring up some of these. So <laughs> you've got, uh, I gather that that's your soda activation that on Stone is, Mountain. Yeah, on Stone Mountain here in Atlanta. Um, and it's just uh, making, I think it's five contacts. Is it five? Five contacts while you're on the peak. Um, it's it's certain summits. They have to be a, a certain height. And you can go online and, and then find out where, they're, where they are and go hike up. And, of course, you have to have lightweight equipment. And we have um, the 
the uh, antenna that you throw up in the tree. I'm sorry. I'm not as technical as some of you guys. So That's fine. I don't know what it's called, but it's that wire and you throw it up and it becomes an antenna. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have some other photos here as well. So we've got one here of you at uh, 2018 Hamfest in front of some ICOM gear. What was yes. that like? Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, that was in Huntsville. So um, we enjoyed that a lot. And um, we, <laughs> we have an ICOM. Um, it, it's, it's, a good, it's a good radio. Um, I like going to those because I like to see the older radios. They, you know, a lot of times they have, um, I hate to call them antiques, but, you know, for lack of a better word, antique radios. And I like to go look at all of those. Um, Joe likes the more um, updated versions. He gets a little more excited about those. <laughs> a flex someday, someday. <laughs> yeah, someday. what's funny is I, I don't even know what a flex is. So <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not a good Sorry. thing that you know what it is because it's very expensive. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like, I don't know that. Everything in ham radio is expensive. <laughs> um, so you mentioned to you mentioned to driving your kids to school. So we do have a family photo. Do you have any other hams in the family, or is it just you two? We have failed in that. Um, ah. We had one. Um, I think it was our oldest daughter was interested when she was very very young, and we just couldn't get her to hold on to it. We have had some luck um, working with um, the high school that the, the kids went to. That we we got uh, a ham radio club started there, so that was really exciting. And the activities that I like really do play well to that. Um, they enjoy the fox hunt. In fact, I don't know. Did you show them? Did, did you give them a picture of the fox hunt with the alien? No, I didn't give them that, but the Atlanta Science Fest is in there where you're showing that other family. Hammer. Yeah, have, have a chat about that. Yeah, so that was, um, that was a really big science event um, that was held in Piedmont Park in Atlanta. And um, the um, North, it was it North Atlanta? North Fulton. North Fulton. North Fulton. North Fulton. Yes. They were, all, they were all working and uh, we were just had different activities for the kids to play with the radios. And I was just talking to that young lady about, um, you know, she didn't even really know what a walkie talkie was. So it was interesting to, to show her how it worked and how she could talk to people all over. Um, everybody's so used to their phones now that, um, when they see a radio, they don't really know what to do with it. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you guys were on CQ magazine as well. We were. That was uh, the, the guy who, uh, Joe Moel, who writes the fox hunting article, found us on the internet because we had put on a club hunt, and that led to a story which led to, hey, would you like to be on the cover? And uh, it was a total shock, and uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of fun, got a lot of attention about that, and uh, Mary Catherine's been on a magazine cover before. Uh, I have not, so that was that was really cool. That's that's yeah. awesome. And I think we've got we've got a couple more photos. So obviously we've got the the wedding photo that you okay. sent through as well. Yeah, I wanted to sneak that in because we are going to celebrate our 26th wedding anniversary in a couple of weeks. So I just wanted to uh, wish my lovely YL a happy anniversary early on the air. Uh, congratulations. That was uh, 26 years ago. And then uh, I think I put our QSL card in the uh, yeah. stack. And we uh, we commissioned uh, an, an artist to do that. And it kind of kind of represents a little bit of the things we enjoy doing, the satellites, the fox hunting, the soda. And uh, if you make contact with us on the air, either one of us, we, uh, we, we, we'd love to send you a QSL card. I'll have to make sure that I try and make contact with you. That's an awesome QSL card, I must say. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for those those photos. Oh, I need to close them all down now. Uh, so, uh, so we've heard a, a couple of a little bit about your um, activities and things. So, what's your favourite radio? Or ra what radios do you own, Mary Catherine? Uh, we have an icon. Um, 
7300 and then we have the Kenwood D74 and that's probably the one that I've used the most. Um, use it a lot for the fox hunting and use it for um, when we um, volunteer in the community. We do a lot of races and things like that where we go and support the runners or the um, cyclists or um, triathletes. Um, so I use that radio for those events. Um, and then um, we have a Yazoo uh, 818. <laughs> I have it written down so I would know um, <laughs> for QRP. Oh, that's cool. So I've, I've, I've also put, so you, Joe's very active on Instagram. Uh, I've yes. popped in at, I've popped in the, uh, in the chats on Facebook and YouTube, a link to both your uh, Instagram, Joe, and also to Mary Catherine. So, uh, give them a follow on, uh, you know, on the Instagram and, uh, and, and also I think Joe's also on Twitter as well. So check them out and, uh, you'll be able to keep up with their activities. So we've got a couple of comments too. K6RK says plus one for soda. <laughs> um, we have um, a few other comments which we might get back to because we're going to talk later on in the show uh, about some issues around the hobby. So we might get back to those comments. Uh, Audi Moore says, once you understand what a flex is, you will forever wish for one. My experience, <laughs> LOL, my experience anyway. So, uh, yeah, Okay. So thank you, Mary Catherine, for sharing that. Uh, next, we'll move on to Linda, a VK7QP. So uh, introduce yourself um, and what's your background in amateur radio, Linda? Uh, hello, everyone. Yes, um, so my, I'm Linda, VK7QP, the quiet princess. And uh, I've, we had the uh, Remembrance Day contest here a little while back. And for that, the exchange is how many years have you been on the air? So the Remembrance Day is celebrating the end of the war in the Pacific. And so my exchange for that was 49. And I thought, wow, that's a long time. Uh, so that goes back to when I was in uh, Wales at uh, university, North Wales. And uh, there I met uh, Martin, uh, who was obsessed with radio even then. He is now VK7GN, and he's uh, very interested in contesting. So he's probably worked you, uh, Ria. Uh, so, yes, he was very interested in uh, contesting, and I was very interested in him. So I thought, well, the only way to keep this going is for me to get a license too. So I studied for my license and I was uh, pleased to get that. Now, it's none of your multi-choice stuff in those days. It was writing a, an essay about whatever the question was. So you had to, to uh, understand the question and, and write your story and, uh, and pass. So that, I reckon that's a lot harder than doing multiple choice because you, if you're in doubt, you can always answer B. That's the uh, rule, isn't it? So, <laughs> so, yeah, so I got my license. I had to go to the Coast Guard station in, on Anglesey, which is part of North Wales, to get my uh, Morse qualification. And uh, so, yes, so then I got my license. So that enabled me then to uh, uh, carry on life with uh, Martin, which has been going on ever since. And next year we celebrate our golden wedding anniversary. <laughs> so that's one upmanship. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so he's, uh, I, I was uh, quite active in radio for a little while. And at that time we actually established the Alara group. So that's, that was actually Ladies in Amateur Radio Association. And then um, it turned out into Australian because we weren't an international group, we're just Australian. So we set that up in 1974-75. Uh, um, then I got busy working and uh, studying, so I had to uh, let things go and I was just active on, um, on two metres. But my other main activity, which Hayden has a picture of, is winching up towers. You'll find me on the winch and um, if you can find the picture because Martin being interested in contesting, uh, we had, um, we've had various properties over the years and the main activity is to uh, put up big towers and winch them, winch them up. So, yep, that's, uh, <laughs> that's uh, my main activity in radio, am amateur radio for many years was on the winch. That's putting a quad up in uh, Gawler in uh, South Australia, and so that's why uh, Matt gave me the shout out because I I know Matt from uh, South Australia. 
so yes, yeah, so that's that's my background, um, and so I retired in uh, 20, 2010. Uh, I was the uh, university librarian at UTAS uh, University of Tasmania. Uh, retired from that, and I, I then, on our travels, met up with uh, Jean VK3 VIP, who is very active in uh, Alara in um, Victoria, state of Victoria. Here, uh, you can uh, you can lose that picture now. <laughs> I've winched, <laughs> I've worn my arm out winching. I don't need to do that anymore. So we travelled around in our caravan, and I met up with uh, Jean, and she got me back into Alara again. So I. Um, I joined up with Alara and uh, got back into uh, uh, into that at that point. So that's uh, that's my uh, life of amateur radio so far. So uh, we'll talk about your contesting station, your remote station. We've got some photos of that. If if you want to talk about that, Linda, and I'll bring up some photos. Yes. Uh, okay. So the uh, the challenge is that we're now on a uh, suburban block, a quarter acre suburban block in uh, Hobart in uh, southern Tasmania. Uh, so it's a very nice place to live, but it's not very good for amateur radio. So we've established a, um, a remote station. So you can almost see behind me parts of our station here. This is our operating station behind me. Um, and that works remotely to a shack, which is uh, 50 kilometers away. So you can see that's our bush block. Uh, you can't quite see the ultra beam that we put up uh, most recently, uh, but that works really well. And you can see Martin is in the middle of that. There's just a little blue blob that you might be able to see. Uh, so he's um, he's there just checking out the guys on the uh, ultra beam. We work from a, um, a shed, which is, yeah, the, there it is, so, solar powered. Um, so we're off grid for that. So you can see there's a, a water tank to the left, and then there's a, uh, a cat flap that you can see on the right-hand side of the shed where all the um, antennas go in and out, all the coaxes feed through there. We've got uh, the ultra beam. We've got a number of uh, dipoles for um, 160, 80, 40, 20, and... Um, Yes, yeah, so di dipole and the verticals for 160 and uh, vertical for 40. So we operate those all remotely from from the uh, operating station just behind me. We've got a uh, remote rig which we use to do the uh, controlling and we use a 5G network to uh, link between the two. And it uh, it works uh, pretty pretty well. Yep. So for the Alara contest, I was uh, sitting at home here uh, in the comfort of our home and uh, working that. So that's uh, a bit about our remote station. Uh, any questions or comments about that that I can expand on? I do have I do have uh, a couple of comments from the uh, the chat. We've got uh, Linda Golden Anniversary is something to be proud of, and Ham Radio Crash Course says it looks like a cool setup. I need an external shack. It's too easy for the family to find me now. So, uh, and K K K six USY uh, Ham Radio Adventures. Linda has done a lot in the hobby for sure. So, let's talk about some more things that you've done um, in the hobby. You mentioned Alara, so we've got uh, a, a, a screen yes. got here of Alara. So, um, just talk about Alara's. Um, uh, what they're involved in with the uh, in in Australia and how your involvement is with that. I'm I'm really proud of these uh, three ladies, particularly. Uh, there are four more that I'm uh, pleased with as well. We we've just established a grant scheme here in Australia. Uh, so these uh, three ladies, who are uh, Elsa, Lily, and Alicia, uh, passed their foundation license at the end of last year. They applied for a grant to cover their costs, and uh, Alara covers half the costs, which is about $100. Takes them through from, uh, uh, covers part of their assessment and uh, getting their call sign. So, uh, so we're pleased to have these uh, foundation members. And Alicia and um, Lily teamed up because they both live in the same place in New South Wales. They got together at their local club and um, activated that for the um, Alara contest. So I'm really, really proud of them. They're, they're terrific. 
Um, Elsa's in uh, VK6, uh, West Australia, so she's a bit further away, and I didn't actually hear, hear her on the contest, but she may well have been because the skit wasn't good. So Alara is uh, busy trying to encourage more women to get on the air, and that's our, uh, our ambition. Uh, we have a net every, uh, every week to uh, uh, try and encourage women to get on, have a bit of a chat and get used to uh, talking on the radio. Uh, and we have local events and we have an Alara meet, which happens every couple of every three or so years. And we'll have one next year in Bendigo and Victoria. So, yeah, we're here about uh, cheering uh, women on in uh, amateur radio, Hayden. Well, that's what we're all about today. And we'll get to some more um, questions later on about how we can continue to do that and, and keep up the good work that uh, you've been doing, especially and, uh, and others that we heard earlier on, too. Um, so <clears throat> what we might do is talk about um, just about your um, your soda uh, and parks activations uh, quickly and then we might move back to Rhea because Rhea's got some photos for us uh, to share as well. So uh, I've got uh, this photo here uh, yes. for BKFF Operation. What's that all about? Yeah, so this was uh, activating a park in uh, uh, northern uh, Victoria. Uh, this was the first kind of operation I was doing. So the car, the the radio is in the car, and I was just operating that from that way. Um, I've got an FT891, which um, works really well. So there's another picture with me uh, uh, operating the park. Yeah, that one. So on this one, I like this picture because it shows that I've just got the head part of the radio on a, um, on a table on my lap. I've got the microphone in my hand, obviously, nattering away. And I've got a tablet, which is um, uh, showing how I log my contacts because there's a brilliant piece of software called VK Porter Log, which you might be able to put a link up for Hayden somehow or other, uh, but it, uh, VK3ZPG. Uh, Peter uh, has created that for Androids. So it's brilliant because you can keep your log on your tablet and then you can uh, send your log off at the end of your activation to uh, the log people for the parks activity. And you can upload it to uh, log for om or whatever other software you use. And it also brings up the name of who you are talking to. So it sounds like you know everybody you're talking to, but it's actually a cheat because it just brings up the name for you. So I think that's, I think that's brilliant. So this is me at another place, uh, Lake Eildon in uh, Victoria. So there's a, a very large dam there. It was pretty dry at the time, and that was, that was rather cold. So I've got my possum beanie on there. <laughs> and I was very glad to get a cup of coffee when that uh, finished. Um, I, and, and this was brilliant. This uh, kookaburra uh, came to uh, inspect what, what I was doing. There were actually two of them together. Uh, and they had a big fight. This one won and sat on this um, branch and said, yeah, I'm the one to supervise this uh, park activation. And that, that was uh, really good. Uh, so it started out because, we, because we've got, oh, that shows our squid pole. Yeah. So it's a squid pole that we uh, clip up with um, hose clamps to keep it up for the duration of the uh, activation and put a dipole on the top. So I've got a dipole for 40 and 80, uh, which operates, you can switch between the two by clipping the ends on and off. And I've got a, a dipole for 20 as well. So that's, uh, that's my park activations. Um, and I, I really enjoy that. Okay. Well, thank, thanks, uh, thanks, Linda, and and uh, and for the photos as well, and uh, and for everything that you've been that you've done in in amateur radio. We've got uh, some more comments that come in. Kyle A zero Z uh, remote ham radio is catching on more and more. Uh, contests are fun. Rag chew not as much, but still eats hours a day. And uh, I think the view of the dam there from Tim D. Wow, the view beats the the fins here in Cambridgeshire. <laughs> so. Um, we'll just we'll go back around to you, uh, Rhea. You've got some uh, photos that you'd like to show. Uh, you can uh, screen share uh, that if you like. All right. Let me see here. The um, oh, share screen. Okay, share screen. All right. Um, 
and of course I'm on a Mac so it tells me that I have to allow Google Chrome to share pictures um, oh man um, darn it. it's asking me to quit <laughs> um, if I come back would you let me back in yeah yeah that's fine what we'll do is um Thanks everyone anyway for um, telling us about yourselves and how you got into radio and uh, what you're doing behind the scenes and all, all the work that you do. What we'll do is we'll open it up now and we'll hear um, your, oh, no, we've got your screen share working. We'll pop that up. Um, oh, good. Okay. Mic oh, security. Just, okay. Yep. Yeah, so I'll just add that in. There we go. All right. So you see here one picture um, and you can see in the background, you see, um, the rover, which belongs to Andrea K2 Echo Zulu. Well, in there, I can show you the inside of the rover and brace yourselves, wires are coming. <laughs> so here she has a flex radio and she has a bunch of VHF transverters and amplifiers. And believe it or not, it all works and we win. Unfortunately, she's been um, in more in Texas these days. So I'm not really have been contesting much with her. Um, here you can see a picture of us at the ARRL. Actually, we visited the ARRL after the June VHF contest in 2018. Um, and then I go back here, I'm jumping around a little bit. Flex Radio, I love Flex Radio. Um, they love me. This is me at the Flex Radio banquet, um, just with a big smile on my face because all my friends are there. And I have a lot of fun with the Flex Radio community. And you notice I have all my name tags, Diva, Flex 6700, Alpha Team, Community Elmer, um, Computer Geek, you know, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> uh, one more here. And uh, this is, um, we're having quote unquote power lunch with some of the ARRL staffers. You have Bart Yankee. Um, you have W1SMS, Steve Simons, who is not an ARRL staffer, but he lives nearby. Uh, the one in the corner, I'm sorry, I apologize, I don't remember. And you have Andrea across from me. So we're there. Um, and here in the parking lot, you could see the rover. The, the beam, the beam antenna is not part of it, unfortunately. That's part of W1AW. But the rover, it has a lot more antennas now. And um, she she's a rolling RF generator. Um, that would be, that would be a, a real challenge is putting the uh, the beams on the rover. I think that would be rather impressive. You know what is a real challenge? The real challenge is driving. So in that same VHF contest, we mistakenly got into a parkway in Connecticut. Now in America, in some states, parkways have very limited height because they have overpasses. And expressways are where the trucks could go, you know. They can have like um, um, big 12, 14 feet of height. Well, we mistakenly got on the parkway and we were worried that the antenna was gonna hit something. And at one time it was so low, we had to like make a maneuver in the middle of the road and then get in through the overpass. So that was scary. Um, this gentleman here on the side is none other than K1ZZ, the former CEO of the ARRL, who is now the secretary of the IARU. And a really nice guy, cares a lot about ham radio, really knowledgeable, and I've had a lot of good discussion with him. The shirt I was wearing, um, I don't have a picture of it handy, but when they had the power outages in Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, um, I made a comment about how Puerto Rican hams are suffering. You know, why are you worried about them sending 5900? You know, some people haven't had power for weeks. And lo and behold, a few weeks later in my mailbox, um, pops this t shirt said, Thank you for your um, expressing your concern and support about Puerto Rico. So that was nice. Nice. I still have a shirt. This is the Great South Bay Amateur Radio Club. We had a lighthouse event at the Fire Island Lighthouse where I went and um, operated the lighthouse. Um, it was a lighthouse on weekend, pretty nice. You here I have an Icon 7610 and their laptop computers. Um, really nice guys, Great South Bay. This one here is a campaign event for um, when I was running for director. 
back in 2018. Um, this is a ham fest, radio rally, whatever you want to call it. Now, who knows where this one is? Uh, last man standing set. That's right. I, I noticed the call sign in the background. <laughs> right. I was invited. It was a privilege and an honor, and I got to operate. And I have memories of there. I'm probably going to go back if um, if I get invited back. Well, actually, on um, my uh, on my channel, I have a an interview with Jet Jurgensmeyer. Um, oh, I've forgotten his call sign, uh, but he did. Uh, I did an interview with him uh, and his time because uh, he plays uh, Boyd on that show, and mm -hmm. uh, and I've also spoken to John Armadeo who is the director i think on the set yeah and he organizes executive the, producer I think. yeah and he organizes a lot of the um uh the uh, activations of the station there and he actually emailed me about a noise problem which uh mm -hmm. is it's a it's a studio so there's a lot of lights and a lot of noise that uh, that appear on the set and plus i'm a huge tim allen fan so <laughs> i'd like to visit one day but i can't do that at the moment <laughs> Yeah, well, when this coronavirus is gone, hopefully, or, you know. Um, it Anyway, it was fun. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, like, yeah, the noise is terrible. I mean, half of what I was working with California. And as much as I, I love working Californians, and I have no no disrespect for Californians, but um, it would have been nice to work somewhere else. It's like the noise was just so high I couldn't hear anybody else. All right, um, shifting gears a little bit. This is me contesting at the shack of K2 Triple T, Silent Key now. Um, this was one of the last few contests we had at the shack. And uh, Jay was a really nice guy. Jay would, would, Jay would give you the shirt off his back, okay? And um, unfortunately, the big C took him, cancer. And, um, you know, he, but he, he made you feel right at home. While I was running the pileups on 20 meters, he would bring me breakfast. He would bring everybody breakfast in the shack that he made himself. This really nice guy, you know. Um, his uh, station is for sale, by the way. His wife lives there, but she wants to to move out. When I first came to AWRL, um, oh, you see my hot sauce in the background, El Yucateco Habanero hot sauce. <laughs> it's another hobby of mine. Um, this is my name badge for AWRL, and. Um, business card that I got issued on the first day there. Have it ready for me. Um, anybody tell me where this is? Oh, the United Nations. <laughs> right. So we operated for you one UN, for you one United Nations. Adrian and, and James, they invited me over. Um, actually, we had an awards presentation for them, and I got to operate um, for you one UN. I'm, I'm actually an ex-UN employee. I was there for a while, and then um, I came back to operate. This one here is, um, you can see the power of Flex Radio. You can see my kids, smiling kids there. They This was actually not transmission. This was receiving the Fest and Men broadcast recreation. And this photo was taken for the Washington Post, where they did an, an article on how I was able to receive. So I received and I live streamed the, the broadcast um, of recreation of um, the historic fest and then broadcast. And this was me taking a picture for the Washington Post. Are your um, kids licensed uh, rare? Oh, we're working on it. <laughs> it's tough. It's, 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 you know, she's laughing. Carrie, come here. I don't know. Am I still on camera? Anyway, so I have yep. Carrie here, one of the three. Hi. So she's um she's working on it, but the rest of them they are too. Um, this was a ham fest I went to the other day, representing AWRL for the New Jersey Antique Radio Club. The one of the few, um, what should I put, phys physically, um, non-virtual ham fest we had. You can see everybody has their masks on. Um, and then finally, I'm going to show you, I actually wrote a Japanese, an article for CQ Japan, uh, CQ Amateur Radio Japan, and I've been writing features for them off and on where, um, you know, so you might see some of my writing in there. So, uh, thankfully I get it translated to Japanese, so I don't take bad Japanese. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, well, thank uh, you for. You know, uh, I'm learning. Yeah, I oh, thank you for sharing those uh, photos, um, Rhea. That's uh, fantastic. Um, so, what we'll do is okay. So now, what we'll do is we'll open it up and we'll hear um, your opinions on the following questions. We've got some in the chat, so it's over to you guys. What do you think? Um, so the first question, if I go back. Um, If I can find it, yeah, there was a question on the on the um, on the fee. Uh, here we go. So I sure hope the fifty dollar fee falls through or gets lowered. We need more women in this hobby, kids too. And we also heard from uh, Matthew. Got so many comments here trying to find it, uh, Matthew. Uh, it would be great to hear how the presenters engage or encourage children pursue or engage in AR. So we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. So, what is the future of ham radio? And I'll as I said, I'll throw it over to you guys. What do you think? How how can we get more kids interested in the hobby and especially girls and women involved in the hobby? That's what we're talking about today. What do, what do you guys think? Well, I uh, was uh, helping out with the local scout group just recently. So uh, VK7HSD has got a group uh, studying for their foundation license. Uh, so that's one way of doing it is uh, through the scouts. Uh, my assistance was being at the other end of the um, microphone. So he got his scouts together and they were practicing on the air. So so that was a, a bit of fun. Um, yeah, that was... That was one way of doing it, and then carrying on that to uh, Jota to to get the uh, scouts actually activating for a, a period of time. Do you think that to to um, the guys that we've got in the US? Do you think that the fifty dollar fee is is really going to inhibit um, what we're trying to do with kids and getting them involved in amateur radio? Yes, I I definitely. I mean, like I mentioned, the the AWRL um, is. Going to, is going to file comments in opposition to this fee. Uh, my personal feeling is that yes, fifty dollars up front is um, is too much. It's too much for somebody who, you know, um, is wanting to get licensed. When I got licensed, I got licensed at age I think it was seventeen or eighteen. I had to scrape together, um, what was it like, about eighty American dollars or about. I think we, so. We took I took the City and Guilds UK exam, and it was sixty British pounds to get to get the um, to take to take the exam, and I had to scrape that together. It took me like four years to do that. It was a lot of money, so I don't see this um, really you know helping us at all. Uh, I really hope the FCC has a change of heart and um, you know they just drop this and say thank you, you know. But um, we, we like what you're doing, and we think that ham radio is not only a good a service in times of emergency, but it's a, it's a venue for kids to become curious, you know? We really want them to become curious. Well, here in, um, Linda would probably know too, here in Australia, our license fees are quite high. You have to pay an annual fee as well as a, an upfront fee, which is very expensive. I think uh, from memory, if you T uh, take the fee it's I think it's $99 for uh, an exam fee uh, but then there's I think there's two exam fees that you have to pay I'm, I'm not quite sure I'd have to bring it up again but uh, yeah the the cost is really a problem I think um, as far as getting kids involved especially yeah oh we've yeah, also it, got a it, comment. sorry we've got a comment from Ham Radio Crash Course, awesome. I'm looking forward to what the AWRL has to say. Also glad to hear your thoughts. Um, yeah, well, this is one thing about the AWRL. The AWRL is not going to come out guns blazing first. We're going to have, you know, we're going to work at this carefully and we're going to have some um, thoughtful, we're going to have thoughtful comments from our attorney, David Sadal, K3ZJ. He's, he's fantastic. He's a veteran of the FCC. So he's, he's, he's really good. And what about, um, do you think you guys, uh, so Kat, um, do you think that uh, you, I, I, I think that you, you would inspire uh, younger ladies and kids through things like your channel? 
Do you think that that's helpful? Um, the $50 fee? No, because uh, that's just like Rhea had said earlier in our little chat thing. Um, $50 is, can be a lot to a lot of people. And if you're charging $50 for kids to join, they're going to be less likely to join at $50 because they can take that $50 and they can go buy V-Bucks for their Fortnite game. So, or, you know, different credits and stuff on their Xbox, on their Switch, on their um, phones for different app, app purchases. So, honestly, that $50, um, you know, to them, they would rather Do have Do you think that we can else. reach uh, more through social media with with ham radio, like through YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, like uh, some of you guys do. Um, yeah, actually, I was actually reached out on my Discord channel. Um, a guy uh, reached out to me, and his daughter was very, very excited. She actually popped into my live chat this last time, and she was really, really excited to talk to me. Her name was Deidre, and. And she uh, was very, very inspired. So actually, she's got her tech, and she's actually working on her general because she wants to go further and actually be able to talk on the radio through HF. So her dad reached out to me, told me he would thank me for getting her excited about it again. So that's very inspiring, in my opinion, um, especially with the other, you know, with other kids. I'm trying to get my kids motivated, but they're two boys and. It's been kind of tough. And Mary, so. Mary Catherine, the the work that you did at the Atlanta Science Fair, those kind of events will definitely appeal to to uh, uh, a younger generation to getting interested in the hobby, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, they get really excited when they they see the radios and they hear about wh what they can do and where they can talk. You know, talking them all over the globe with a ham radio. Um, I think um, I think we try to locally um, encourage the the group at the high school. You know, we start small there. Um, we invite um, groups to come to our fox hunts and um, you know get the colleges involved if we can get. I, I think you know Rhea mentioned early on, you know, getting teachers involved. I think would be a, would be great if we could get some teachers to really, um, really get passionate about it. I, I don't think the younger generations know anything about it unless they are related to somebody who uses a ham radio. So, um, and I do think events like Parks on the Air and Soda where you're outside and people see you, uh, and people notice that. We have people, and Linda may have experienced this as well, who just yes, indeed. walk up to us. Yeah, they walk up to us and like, what the heck are you doing? You know, and we get to explain to them what ham radio is about and what we're doing at the moment and what you can do. And, um, you know, it's just making people aware. And um, I do think that we've got to make it simple for people to be a part of it, um, going back to the fees. So we've got to make everything accessible, testing accessible. Um, you know, with COVID, make testing online and um, reducing fees and anything we can do to make it easier for people will help as well. Yeah, there is a uh, group, uh, Young People on the Air, YOTA, which uh, seems to be gather gathering a bit of uh, energy. I think there's, uh, it's active in the States and uh, one of our newer uh, members has uh, got involved with that. Uh, and they're trying to set something up for uh, Oceania as well. So uh, I think there's uh, some, there are some groups of people active in that area trying to generate some enthusiasm, I think. And we've got uh, another comment from Tim D. As a, as a Nuni, I'd lo love my wife to get involved in ham radio so that we can share the hobby. She sees it as a geeky hobby. How best can I promote it to her and what attracted you all into the hobby? <laughs> Well, um, one thing, um, I have a, a friend who tells me each one reach one, which is kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. um, misery loves company, <laughs> except you're not really peddling misery. Um, 
if you get them at least involved with other radiometers, um, like for example, we have the YL OpNet. I'll put a link to that. Basically, it's a um, a net on Echolink every Thursday uh, evening U.S. time, and it's on Alara conference node. Yes. So, um, yay, Alara! <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's very it's very informative and it's very casual and it's good for networking. So. And quite frankly, things like that. Um, there's also a friend of mine, um, Barthi, VU2RBI. She has a net out in India every day at 6.30 Indian Standard Time, which is, I think, um, is it, no, sorry, 6 o'clock Indian Standard Time, which is 8.30 Eastern. And um, that, you know, that one encourages people. So, you know, we, we talk about a number of things. If they get involved on social media, um, and they have YLs basically helping other YLs to get involved. That would go a long way, I think. Well, Mary, Mary Catherine, I thought, made a very good point. She said that most of us don't really know about it unless a relative was involved with it. That was the case mm -hmm. with me, um, uh, the case with uh, with Kat, with your father as well, um, and, and those sort of things. So it definitely, I, I think the teacher um, aspect of getting it into schools and also at the science fairs and all of these sort of places definitely will uh, increase the um, the the promotion of the hobby and how people can get involved in it. I think the other thing is how it uh, connects people around the world. Well, I know that uh, social media does that these days, but when I was getting into it, it was the only way to talk to uh, other countries. Um, so Martin and I were there in uh, Wales and it was because of amateur radio that we felt able, once we graduated, to come out here to Australia immediately and knew that we'd have a group of friends here that we could uh, mm -hmm. connect with. So we had no fear of coming to Australia and thinking, you know, what on earth will we do out here? Um, we got an immediate group of friends and then we've uh, met up... Um, I'll give a uh, shout out for N6AA, Dick Norton, who Rhea may well know in the uh, oh, yeah. ARRL. Well. Yep, yep. So he's mm -hmm. a great friend of ours. So he came to stay with us um, in uh, South Australia, where I was winching that tower earlier, as he was working there for quite a while as a uh, consultant in the defence industry. So you meet people. And then there's another photo that uh, you've got, Hayden, if you can put that up of um, Bob, NA5AR. Uh, we met him uh, through Amateur Radio. Uh, he offered to be Martin's QSL manager when we first came to Australia, and we've uh, been in touch with him ever since. And two years ago, he and his uh, wife, Jackie, came to visit us and came to see the wonderful Russell Falls in uh, Mount Field, which is a wonderful park to activate, very close to here, and so um, so that's that's another reason for getting involved. As you can, I, I can now go around the country here in Australia and meet up with people I've talked to in parks, and we can go around the world and talk to people. So I think that's another way of getting uh, women involved: is that they know there's a social connection that you can have. Perhaps I'm old-fashioned now with all the social media stuff, but uh, amateur radio worked for us. Uh, we've got uh, uh, another few comments here too. Um, Audi Moore says, getting kids in for free makes it much easier. Something more like 15 or $20 would be easier to deal with. $50 just seems like a, a hard no for a lot of people. Uh, the Fossil Channel, I've experienced that doing Poda, Soda and Parks on the Air. I also work in, my, in the New York State Parks here in the Hudson Valley and people sometimes ask about my gear. So mm -hmm. you've probably experienced that yourself. Uh, Mary Catherine going out mm -hmm. on the soda activation, someone says, what are you doing? You're putting up this big antenna. Mm -hmm. So um, it's uh, it's handy to be able to, to explain to them what that's about. Uh, and uh, Rhea's also put in the chat to uh, the India Wild Net on, uh, on Echo Link as well. So um, uh, that's, that's good. Um, yeah, so uh, so that's uh, um, pretty much talking about what what we think we can do to improve the hobby. Is there anything else that anyone would like to to talk about or to uh, to shout out? Silence um, is gold. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> I think we're all waiting on each other. Uh, well, yeah. I, I can talk about uh, suburban noise, which is why we've got our remote station. Uh, the noise level here is uh, seven. So trying to operate anything, even if we were able to put our towers up here in our uh, quarter acre block, uh, it'd be no good. So I think we need to think about the future of amateur radio in terms of uh, how people can uh, can be active. Uh, so I was thinking about um, you know digital stuff and VHF and UHF being more able you know more able to be done than um, than the HF from uh, small cities, uh, small city blocks. Um, and then I think this is why the parks and the SOTA uh, activities are encouraged because uh, you can go out into the uh, into the wilds of Tasmania and operate your radio and there's absolutely no noise at all. So I think that that's going to make a change to the emphasis of how uh, radio will develop in the future. So that's, uh, that's a starting point for you. <laughs> yeah. I'd also like to say um, there are a lot of good interesting developments. This is not your grandfather's ham radio. This is not your grandmother's ham radio anymore. And we need to embrace the change. Change will be things like um, we do radio differently. You know, um, we don't require Morse code for a license anymore, but a lot of people are learning it. There are great clubs which teach Morse code, such as Long Island CW and um, also CW Ops. And they, they teach excellent Morse code classes. There are different modes like DMR. DMR and D-Star are very popular and they get people active. There is FT8. Joe Taylor is a good friend of mine. And Joe, you know, Joe is very passionate about the FT8 digital modes. There is, um, and there's a whole world to explore. You know, don't just limit yourself to one thing. Try something new and eventually you'll find things that you like. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and, have, and have you noticed, Rhea, too, with the um, coronavirus, uh, an uptake in those studying for the exam over there? So, you know, that's really interesting because um, there are several factors that play with coronavirus. One of them is that a lot of these clubs started to have nets specifically for coronavirus, meaning that they would tell people where they could find supplies, you know, what stores were open and such, because toilet paper was in short supply. So where you could find that. Uh, so that amateur radio became a lot popular. As, as Josh from Ham Radio Crash Course could tell you, a lot of people began searching out information on ham radio. At the same time, a lot of places were closed. Ham radio exams were shut down until we eventually got um, the testing um, VECs to allow online testing. So that kind of eased the burden and allowed people to become tested. There has been some interest, but they've been hampered by some factors, is essentially what I'm saying. Yeah, I think we noticed that here too in Australia that we had uh, quite a, an uptake in, in uh, um, testing and we've started to go online here too. So hopefully that makes quite a bit of difference because it's a lot easier to do a test online than it is, I think, to do it in person, especially um, you know, if you if you rely on transportation and all that sort of thing to try mm -hmm. and get to a test centre or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think uh, that we've had a really good uh, a good chat today. It was good to get to know you all and to uh, to um, hear your stories and your activities that you get up to. We've been going for about an hour and twenty minutes, so I appreciate you uh, sticking around this evening in the US. Uh, it's 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 uh, 20 past 11 here in the morning, so it's not uh, it's not uh, late like it is, or getting late over there like it is uh, here. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, if you'd like to find out more uh, about our uh, panel, our wonderful ladies, and also Joe on the uh, on the panel today, <laughs> the links are in the description to those uh, to those links to uh, QRZ and uh, and channels and all that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, I'd uh, just like to uh, do a, um, before we close the stream off, a final um, call. Anyone want to, anything else that you would like to talk about or shout out? It was lovely to meet you all. Thank you uh, for including me in. And thank you yeah, for thank all you. accepting as well. Yeah, thank you everyone for accepting the invitation to come on as well. Neil says, I think you ladies rock. Could you imagine kids picking up amateur radio like smartphones? Again, ladies, keep rocking. W4NRM. <laughs>
And, uh, and again, we'll do a bit of a plug for hashtag ham chicks rule for those who are watching <laughs> later on. Uh, make sure that you get that trending on social media. Um, so uh, that's great. So uh, just a final shout out to my Patreon, PWK7PD. Thank you again for the support and the support on the channel. Uh, for those uh, who would like to follow me on Patreon, the link is also in the description. So thanks again, uh, ladies, and uh, from all of us, uh, seven threes. Seven threes. Seven threes. Thirty-three, ladies. Thirty-threes. Thirty-threes. Forty-fours. <laughs> <laughs>